Today we're checking out one of the brand new Queensland Electric Super Highway EV chargers. This one's recently gone in in Stanthorpe down on the Granite Belt and we'll have a look around the chargers. There's two chargers here and we'll also have a general look around the site. So stay with us. So here we are in Stanthorpe. Lovely time of the year down here. We're sort of coming up towards the end of April so generally all the uh, autumn leaves change colour here. Just in the location at the charger here, we don't have many, so sorry guys, I can't show you the beautiful autumn leaves. But this just shows you the location. Um, it's just one block off the main street, so if you literally walk up straight through to the right hand side of that cream coloured building there, you're in the main street of Stanthorpe. So here we are, we're in the Rogers Street car park. So this is uh, where the charger is located. It's sort of in the bottom corner, so this is the entrance to Rogers Street here. And I was just having a chat to a um, fairly new Tesla owner there, had the Tesla 12 months and he was just signing up for the Charge Fox app. So let's go over and have a look at the chargers and um, what sort of configurations we've got. So as I mentioned, we've got a couple of chargers here. So we've got the RTM75 charger by Tritium. So this is one of Tritium's uh, newer model chargers, 75 kilowatts of output capacity and the good thing about this charger is too unlike some of the older models two EVs can plug in at the same time so what it does it prioritizes the lead number one they'll get the majority of the charge but then if a car does pull up into uh, lead number two they'll also be able to get some charge at a reduced rate now this particular charger has the CCS2 plug which the Tesla is plugged into at the moment and it's also got the old Chatamo plug. So not too many of these plugs around in Australia anymore. This is pretty much being phased out, but there is still Japanese cars that use this. So you've got the Mitsubishi iMEVs getting quite long in the tooth now, but the Nissan Leaf still use this one and also the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrids. So if you've got a Chatamo vehicle, you are going to be able to charge at this site here in Stanthorpe. So taking a closer look at the unit, this is a tritium unit as I mentioned, it's unit number 4389 in the Charge Fox group. And you'll notice the branding there, Eureka. That's actually the um, owner of the charger, I guess, and, and the people that put it in. And that's a wholly owned subsidiary of Energy Queensland, I believe, which is owned by the Queensland government. So basically these are Queensland government owned chargers. The confusion happens where by ChargeFox manage the payment and sort of, they provide the phone number, I guess, that you call if there's an issue. Um, so there's a lot of angst, I guess, when these sorts of charges go down and people just don't know whose responsibility it is. But these particular ones owned by Eureka, i.e. the Queensland government, and Charge Fox manage the payment gateway and the um, authentications, I guess, to get the charger to work. I'm just having a quick look at the screen there. So as I mentioned before, you can see the Tesla is pulling 74 kilowatts of energy. So this is a 75 kilowatt charger. So they're getting pretty much max energy there. But if we get a Chatamo car pulls in, they'll be able to pull 25 kilowatts, which is not bad because as I mentioned, the old models, if you pulled in here, you were sitting around, you couldn't get any charge. And down here, we've got the um, card reader. Now, this is the bane of any non-Tesla driver's existence. These tap and go things aren't actually activated. So I'm not aware of any EV chargers in Australia where you can just do tap and go. What that little reader there is for, is for your Charge Fox, um, RFID card and I've got one here so I'll show you guys using that shortly but that's pretty much all that reader is used for you can't tap and go your credit card which is really really annoying here we are on the side of the charger let's see if we can zoom in and see some of those stats there for you guys inputs 400 to 480 volts so it's a three phase input obviously 114 amps at 400 volts Output is 150 to 920 volts DC. So that means some of those um, 800 volt DC 
vehicles like the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Porsche Taycan they'll be able to charge here at 800 volts and get some good amperage it provides a maximum of eight ah, sorry 200 amps and 75 kilowatt hours and the operating temperature there let's zoom in on that because that is a bit of a uh, problem here in Australia the operating temperature or range is minus 35 to plus 50 so that's the rated capacity of these but we do quite often have problems with these in the heat um, but sometimes it's not the charger it's the actual associated electrical infrastructure that's around the charger so there's two reasons why I think this new electric superhighway charger here in Stanthorpe is so important now the first one is that this is a great tourist area so it's about two and a half three hours drive from Brisbane so it's absolutely perfect for those overnight stays or a couple of stays to come down here it's on the granite belt here in Queensland there's a lot of fruit and vegetables grown around here there's also some great uh, wineries etc so it's the absolute perfect place to come for mountain biking visiting wineries uh, going for farm tours and there's some great Airbnb accommodation as well so that's the first thing if you're coming down for a couple of days to stay here and you've got your EV you know that you can rapidly charge it if you're doing some day trips from your accommodation you can zip in here a couple of hours charge and you're more than ready good to go now the second thing is it's a really great backup location for the Warwick charger now my regular viewers will know that I do this trip quite a bit from Brisbane to Tenterfield where my elderly parents live in northern New South Wales so our little MG ZS EV it's one of the smaller capacity newish EVs on the road we can make it to Brisbane to Warwick quite easily distance of around 180 kilometers give or take a little bit and we arrive there with 20 to 25 percent battery capacity which by the way you always want to keep that much up your sleeve because you'll never know when you'll run into some pretty strong headwinds like I did today or if you've got an additional load in the vehicle or you get heavy rain all those things do impact the range of an EV exactly the same as they do a petrol or diesel car so the reason this Stanthorpe charge is important in relation to the Warwick charger there's a single DC rapid charger at Warwick and it's the really old model it's a 50 kilowatt tritium charger it is a bit unreliable lately there is a couple of type 2 um, level 2 chargers which we'll have a look at shortly as backup but if that entire site is down so there's a problem with the energy uh, supply to that site and that site's down that puts us in a really tight spot coming from Brisbane because if we don't charge at Warwick there's no other rapid chargers or type 2 chargers in Warwick that we can use on our MG we could now limp to Stanthorpe so we could drop our speed down to about 80 kilometers an hour we could turn the aircon off and we could take it really easy and we would get to this charger and I've done heaps and heaps of videos on all this type of stuff adjusting your uh, driving to increase your range road trips we put a pod on the top of the camper so I'll put some uh, links to those videos above but please do check out our other videos if you haven't so that's it this site provides a backup to that Warwick site if you're heading from Brisbane or you're coming north and you're heading south Tenterfield does have an NRMA DC rapid charger there similar to this one but again it's the older style um, 50 kilowatt that is a free charger so a lot of people will use that so even though in Tenterfield we've got I think it's four Tesla stalls Tesla superchargers a lot of Teslas will still use that site because it's free of charge the problem with that NRMA rapid charge in Tenterfield is there's only one there there's no level two chargers so if that charger goes out or the site goes down again you are stuck so it's really good to have this one at Stanthorpe which is only about 40 to 50 kilometers from Tenterfield and again it's about 40 or 50 kilometers from Warwick well here it is this is a level 2 AC charger so unlike the one next door that delivers DC or direct current straight to the battery of the car this one is an AC charger so in actual fact it's not even a charger this is called an EVSE electrical EV, electric vehicle supply equipment I don't know why but I always trip over that one 
Again, if you want to know more about that, I go into a lot more detail in another video, so I'll include a link to that above. But basically, this is an AC charger, or EVSE, uses the same electricity as in your house, and it utilizes the uh, EV charger that's actually in the car. So the EV charger is under the bonnet. So you plug into this one, it delivers AC energy to the charger in the car. The charger in the car converts that to DC energy, which goes into your battery. So whenever you see these, they're not actually a charger, they're an EVSE. So let's have a closer look at this one. So look, it works pretty much the same as the other one. It's 30 cents per kilowatt hour, I believe. Same price as the DC rapid charger. Sometimes the AC ones are a little cheaper. There's the station number 4390. Again, managed on the Charge Fox app. And we'll fire this one up in a minute. I don't actually need any charge, but we'll fire this one up and show you guys how it works. Now it's a 22 kilowatt charger. I think I mentioned that before. So our little MG ZS EV, it's a cheap, cheap and cheerful EV. So it can only charge at seven kilowatts. So we can't use the 22 kilowatt capacity. Um, you'll see in there, this one's saying it's 18.7 kilowatts. If you can, kilowatt hours, that's the amount of energy that this particular unit has delivered. And you'll know it, notice it's untethered. So what that means is you need to bring your own lead. So here's one I prepared earlier. So that's our type two lead and I'll show you guys that in a minute. We carry that in the boot of the car all the time and that plugs in there. And again, if we come around the other side, we've got unit one, unit two, we come around the other side and there again, port C and you need the lead. So shortly I'm gonna to try to balance the camera and the lead and work with one hand. So apologies in advance for the camera uh, work, but this is basically a type two to type two lead. Now again, lots of other videos on that, but just to show you quickly, this is a type two end that goes in the charger. That's a small end. This is the type two end that goes into the EV. Again, you'll see that is a larger end. And there's a couple of benefits of having non-tethered chargers like this without a lead already connected. There's also uh, a negative as well. But the benefit of having this without a lead connected is the owner of the EV can bring their own lead that suits their car. So as we mentioned before, if you've got a Chatamo car, um, it uses a J1772. It doesn't use a type two plug like this. So you can buy the lead that suits your car. It'll still have type two this end to plug into there, but it'll have a J1772 plug to plug into your car. So that's one of the advantage of not having a lead that you can bring the lead that suits your car. The other advantage is for the operators and owners of these is less vandalism. Unfortunately, there is some idiots out there that cut the leads off these things. Now, as you'd imagine, that can be quite dangerous. Um, you do risk getting electrocuted, but leads have been known to get cut off um, for the scrap copper value. So that is an advantage to the um, owner. And the other advantage is, I guess, that often the leads get dropped on the ground and the plugs might get broken or split. And that does happen sometimes on the DC rapid charger. So you'll turn up to a charger and the actual plug will be damaged and you can't use it. So again, um, if this was permanently fixed there with the lead, sometimes these plugs get damaged or vandalized. So if there's no lead, less to vandalize, less to get damaged, and you just bring your own. The negative, of course, is you have to have one of these. So I would recommend everyone buys one. They're easy to buy on the internet. They're two to $300, depending on the size and quality, but well worth having one of these. Okay, so as I mentioned, let's see how we go doing this one-handed. So to charge the MG, we push that center up. We pop this one out under here. And there you can see the type two connection. If we were using the DC rapid charger beside us, we'd pull that one out. We don't need that today, so we leave that in. Here we go, we've got our large end. Let's pull the cap off. It just literally plugs straight in like that. Sorry, before I plug it in, see those little slots there? There's a little electric locking pin that comes down. 
So when you plug that in there and we energize that, a little locking pin will lock and that won't be able to be pulled out. Okay, we've got our lead. Always recommend that you uncoil the lead. Again, a bit hard to do with one hand. So there we go, uncoiled. Now, these guys have a lock on them, so I can't actually unlock that. Again, that's to stop vandalism. So what we'll do is we'll come around here to the front. Now, I'm gonna use my RFID card today because I find these more easier and quicker to use than the app. You can order these from ChargeFox once you sign up for the app. And they used to be free of charge. I think they, um, they do charge you now. But that is an RFID card and you swipe it. It's much easier, I believe, than mucking around with your phone. So let's swipe it. Nothing, okay. And keep in mind, I haven't used this one before. Okay, let's try pressing number two. Here we go. Operative true, let's see. Still won't unlock. So now, ah, oh, I think this one is in maintenance. Oh, here we go, RFID. Okay, validating, authorizing. Validation failed. Hopefully you guys can see that. So there we go, interesting. These are all the, um, I guess, frustrations that us EV drivers have when you're using non-Tesla superchargers. So the good thing is Tesla drivers have the Tesla supercharger network. It's literally plug and play. You don't need to think about anything. Us non-Tesla drivers do have some frustrations. Well, there you go. I'm not going to cut that out in the edit. I'm going to leave that in because that is a demonstration of just some of the frustrations we have. So look, I'll leave a note on PlugShare to say that I couldn't get these uh, level two AC chargers to activate. It was coming up with an authentication error. Maybe it's something I'm not doing right, uh, but there's no written instructions here anywhere. There is a, um, a um, RFID scan you can get for instructions. But again, as an EV driver, I don't want to be fluffing around with my phone, downloading PDFs and reading them. I want to be able to just rock up to a charger, plug it in, swipe my RFID and go. Um, in actual fact, I don't even want to swipe an RFID. I want to swipe a credit card and have tap and go. But unfortunately, as I mentioned, I don't believe there's any of those in Australia. So yeah, bit of a disappointing end to the, to the video. I wanted to show you guys just how easy it was to use an AC charger, um, particularly if you needed a backup. So if the rapid one was down and you needed to use this one, or you were going shopping for four or five hours, this is the one you would plug into. You wouldn't plug into the DC rapid charger and hog that charger. Um, because that charges really fast and if you're away shopping there's going to be lots of other angry EV drivers queuing. Well look that's it I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please give it the thumbs up do all the stock standard stuff subscribe if you haven't um, what I really love reading is the comments so if you've got any comments on a charger experience like this one or using the Queensland Electric Super Highway Charger Network or the super reliable Tesla Supercharger Network, which is absolutely awesome. I think the reliability of that charge network is up around 99.2% globally or something insane. Ah, if only us non-Tesla drivers could have that. But hey, my car was significantly cheaper than a Tesla and um, you do need to be aware that you pay for what you get. So um, when I bought a cheaper car, I have to wear some of these frustrations. That's it, take care, stay safe, look after your friends and family. It's been really great sharing this half hour, 40 minutes with you. I look forward to doing some more EV videos for you in the near future. Cheers.